Hi, I'm Andy, project manager here at Drone Deploy. And today, I'm gonna to take you through everything you need to know about making highly accurate drone maps with ground control points, otherwise known as GCPs. This video will cover the entire GCP process, including GCP data collection, uploading your data, the Drone Deploy self-serve GCP workflow, as well as various other GCP best practices. GCPs are vital for professionals in construction, surveying, and aggregates. With GCPs, you can easily achieve the centimeter level accuracy required to take reliable measurements, monitor change over time, and compare site conditions to design plans. To demonstrate the GCP process, I will be collecting five points on the roof of our office using the Trimble Catalyst and a Phantom 4 Pro. As a quick disclaimer, I'm a Part 107 pilot and will be flying in uncontrolled airspace, and the flight will remain within the boundaries of the property at all times. The first step in collecting ground control data is a set of targets. I'm using some rubber sheets with vinyl stickers that make a checker pattern, but you could easily use a variety of other materials, like this five gallon bucket lid that's easy to nail into the ground, or you could even just mark the ground directly with spray paint by painting a large X. I prefer a checker pattern because you can see the precise center most clearly in your images. Remember, you need to use at least four ground control points and spread them as widely and as evenly throughout your site as you can. If there are objects in your site that you're specifically interested in, like a stockpile or a structure foundation, make sure to place markers near those points of interest. If there are large terrain elevation changes across your site, try to place a target near the highest and lowest areas of the site. Lastly, make sure to leave at least a 50 foot buffer between the boundaries of your map and your GCP targets. If a target ends up being outside your map, or it's covered by some sort of obstruction, you won't be able to see it in your images, and therefore you won't be able to use that GCP. Once you've placed your targets, you need to measure the exact center with a precision GNS device. This measurement should be accurate to within around two centimeters. The most important item, and where we see the most errors around GCP mapping, is to make sure you know the EPSG code used for your measurements. More information about EPSG codes can be found on our website at support.dronedeploy.com. But the easiest solution is to just ask your surveyor what EPSG code they are using, or to make sure that your device is set to WGS84, which is code 4326. WGS84 is the standard for GPS, and is typically the easiest mapping system to use. After flying your mission, you will need to upload your map images and the CSV file of your GCP locations. Let's take a look. Select the flight plan you've just flown and add the images from your flight. Now select Add GCPs, and this is where we'll, we will upload your CSV of your GCP locations. Your CSV must follow the format shown in the GCP file template. I've got that file template right here. Here's the CSV of my recorded GCP locations. Your CSV must have four columns, one for the GCP label, latitude, longitude, and elevation. If you're using a projected coordinate system, like California State Plane Zone 3, which is where we currently are, that would be EPSG code 2227, then your columns have to be formatted as label, northing, easting, and elevation. Make sure your column headers match your data. So, as I was saying with uh, the California State Plane, we're using northing and easting and elevation in feet. But for WGS84, which the Trimble is measuring in, that's latitude, longitude, and elevation in meters. I can go ahead and delete these extra columns. And when my data is formatted correctly, I can go ahead and save it as a CSV file. Now select and upload that CSV that I just saved and enter in the EPSG code for my GCP data. So again, for WGS84, that was 4326. Finally, click Agree that you understand that the GCP workflow is self-serve and that our next step is going to be tagging those GCP targets. Click the Upload button and your data will start the upload. Five to 20 minutes after you finish the upload, you will receive an email with a link to the self-serve GCP workflow. From the overview screen, click your first GCP to begin tagging, and the tool will identify one image where that GCP is visible. Go ahead and mark the center, 
And now the tool will look for, mark, and find other images where that GCP is visible. If the markings are correct, you can move along to the next GCP. If it incorrectly marks a view, you can deactivate that one by unclicking the checkbox. And you can also correct views by remarking the center, and that will save it. Go ahead and submit that GCP and move on to marking the next one. I follow the same process. There's the overview image. I mark the center of the GCP. It goes and finds that GCP in a selection of images. And again, I go through and uncheck any of the incorrect views and mark any views that are correctable before submitting that GCP. Once you've tagged all your GCPs, you can review all your markings in the preview screen. The screen will go ahead and load up snapshots of all those different taggings across your GCPs. You can go back and edit a particular GCP, or if everything looks good, you can submit the map for GCP processing. We hope you found this video useful. If you'd like to learn more about GCPs, we recommend visiting our support site and our blog. We also have a white paper that explores the accuracy of GCP and non-GCP maps, now available on our resources page. Thanks for joining me, and happy flying!